Welcome to the Growing in Grace podcast, where you can listen in on some casual conversation about the good news of Jesus without all of the inconsistent religious double talk. If you've ever struggled with feelings of hopelessness, guilt, and despair, or wondered if you're really right with God, it's time to discover the true freedom that comes with the gospel of unlimited and overflowing grace. Here we go, the Growing in Grace podcast at growingingrace.org. Check us out as well on any of your uh, favorite podcasting apps. It's pretty cool how technology has allowed us to do this thing. We're all over the world. The Growing in Grace podcast, all past co- podcasts archived at growingingrace.org. I'm Joel Brzezinski. Mike Kapler, the Cap, is with me. What's up, Cap? In our 16th year, Joel, and we're celebrating 800 podcasts. We're just a little bit past that now, but kind of reflecting, looking back, at uh, some of the many things that we've we've talked about over the years that have had uh, perhaps an impact on our lives, an impact on the podcast and those who listen to it, Uh, some of our favorite things to talk about. These are a few of our favorite (laughs) things. We are 16 going on 17. (laughs) <laughs> well, when you said these are a few of our favorite things, I remember as a youth going to the, uh, I can't think of what it's called now, in St. Louis. Oh, my goodness. Somebody listening knows what I'm talking about. Or you can go see plays. and uh, I think you're talking, you mean like acting and, and stuff like that? Yeah. I think you're talking about Bush Stadium. Well, well no, that's that's... Base that's huge. That's a big. I'm talking about like it's a, it's a little it's a littler place with a maybe a, where you know seating kind of around and then you look down and you see the stage, and um, anyway we oh, saw. Well, like a, you, you don't mean like an amphitheater. Yeah, an amphitheater type of thing. And I just can't think of what it's called. But anyway, we would see things like that, and I remember hearing them. I am 16, going on 17, <laughs> and also what what you just said. So. It all just joined together in my head. I saw we saw several things down there when I was a kid. Man, I I totally forgot what we were even talking about. <laughs> I don't even know either. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, tr- I'm trying to connect the dots on how you got there, and then I I forgot where we started. Well, yeah, it doesn't matter. As usual, it doesn't matter. It's very important, <laughs> but it doesn't matter. Last week we talked about our our disconnect from the law. Of course, again, as we as Gentiles were never under it. It was meant for the Jewish people, but they were freed from it, and we were all brought into one new covenant together in Christ. Um, and that law consisted of many things that we're not at all familiar with, even though you have church people trying to tout the law. They don't really know what the law is. They don't know what's in there. And and Paul, you know, tried to to keep people from becoming teachers of the law when he was writing to Timothy. So, And the law not only included uh, all kinds of ceremonial and sacrificial and dietary laws, but it also included uh, the original stone tablet commandments from Mount Sinai. Uh, all of that uh, Paul called the ministry of death and condemnation. Um, he, he said that that was a, a covenant or a ministry that no longer has any glory. And why does it no longer have glory? Because of another ministry that came in, replaced it, and surpassed it, the ministry of the Spirit in a new and better covenant. So um, we're going to kind of branch off of that a little bit. Something else we've, we've talked about in the past, Joel, is something that we refer to as the morality tree. Going back to the garden, Adam, Eve, the serpent. Uh, and and the fall, uh, and and Adam and Eve choosing to eat from the tree that God told them not to eat from, and uh, we'll discuss a little bit about the morality tree because it it does basically represent that law that would later come through Moses. Right. Yeah. And I I just got to get this out because it came to me before we go any further. <laughs> the sound of music. Uh-huh. These are these are a few of my favorite things. Yes. And I am 16 going on 17, both from The Sound of Music. That's And it brought back that memory. Okay. Well, and, and I just got to say, my <laughs> four-year-old granddaughter, she's obsessed with that whole thing. So oh, really? So it crosses generational lines. Oh, yeah. yeah. She's always talking about, Ju- she calls her Julie Ambrose. <laughs> <laughs> Julie Ambrose. <laughs> oh, I love it. It's like what my sister used to say, biscuit instead of spaghetti. <laughs> so the... Now that we got that over with, and I had to get that off my chest. The, yes, uh, the, I understand. The, the tree of, it's not, remember, it's not the tree of evil. A lot of people get that confused. 
Um, you know, it's, it's like there was something. The the problem with mankind is that they were evil. Is it is it it's evil? But really, the tree that God didn't want Adam and Eve to eat from was the tree of not not even the tree of good and evil, but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And so that's one reason why we would call it the morality tree. It's a tree uh, that would, through which, when they ate from its fruit, they would have the knowledge of good and evil. And when and that's what, what happened. When they ate from it, and, and God had told them, if you eat from this tree, surely you will die. It wasn't a threat. It, w- it was a warning. It was, it, this is what would happen. Your eyes would be opened. You would see good and evil. And what happened was, when, when that happened, sin entered the world and death through sin. Paul would write that in one of his epistles. And so when we think about the morality tree and the, what originally happened with mankind, we understand that it wasn't just that man got evil all of a sudden. It wasn't an evil thing. In fact, Eve, when she looked at the tree, she's thinking to herself, This, you know, well, the serpent, of course, you know, tempted her and he said, you will not surely die for God knows in the day you eat, you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you'll be like God doing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes. And here's the thing. And and a tree desirable to make one wise. She took of its fruit and ate. So it wasn't like they had this evil plan. Like we're just going to, we're just going to become evil. But this to this to them, this tree looked desirable for wisdom, the, the knowledge of good and evil. We could be like God, and they didn't realize that God had already created them in His own image. They were already like God, and they didn't need anything else. And God had actually put many trees in the garden. He said, "You can eat from any of these trees. Just don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The tree of life was there, and they chose instead the morality tree, and that's where everything went haywire." Yeah, and, and and why why do we equate that with the law uh, that would come later on, um, in an effort for the Jewish people to try to achieve or attain righteousness by what they did, by their actions? Um, because Paul said in Romans three twenty to answer that question, um, uh, by the works of the law, no one will be justified in his sight, for through the law comes the knowledge of sin. That's in Romans 3. Several chapters later, Paul would go on to say things like, I wouldn't have known what it, what it was to covet if the law had said, thou shall not covet. Um, and, and so we, we see this connection here. And, and the other thing that we've talked about within this subject of the morality tree, Joel, is that a lot of people just think that Adam desired to somehow rise above God, to try to as if he was trying to take over the throne, as if he was to try to make himself equal with God, to like he was on a power trip of some kind. And, and I think the case can be made um, because we don't know that Adam and Eve were at all familiar with with sin at this at this point in time. Mm-hmm. But it's very possible that they desire that see that the temptation was built around desiring to be more like God. Well, what do we hear religious people say today? We should all strive uh, and work at becoming more like Jesus. So, in in a sense, Adam uh, and his wife, they they were seeking to please God, not to make him angry, uh, and they didn't believe what God had told them when he said, if you eat of that thing, you will die. I don't even know if they knew what that meant, but <laughs> right. they were told not to do it, and they basically just didn't believe what God said. They thought, well, hey, wait, we we could do something to make ourselves more like God. There's people running around in Christendom today who are doing the very same thing, trying to become more like God, trying to be more righteous, trying to become more holy, trying to become or live like uh, Jesus, and it all sounds good. It tickles the religious flesh, but so it's just very possible that Adam had the right intentions, but the results were catastrophic. Right. Yeah, and I think a lot of people have those good intentions with the law, uh, but they don't understand that you know Paul called it, you know, in Second Corinthians three, the ministry of death, the ministry of condemnation. Paul called it bondage. Paul called the law bondage. He said that what the law did is it made people guilty. 
it shut their mouths and it brought bondage and it was the strength of sin it's not the thing that stops sin but the law is the power or the strength of sin and so just like Adam and Eve got messed up with their understanding of what the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was all about people today get messed up about what the the purpose of the law is not realizing that the law is not there to bring us life the law can't bring life the, the law is written in stone the Ten Commandments were, and then the other 603, the people wrote them on stones, the scriptures say, and um, they can't do anything to give us life. They can't do anything to stop a person from sinning or to help a person to live a good life. All they do is bring, all they do is minister death, condemnation, bondage, and guilt. And so we can't live by the law. We have to, Paul said he had to die to the law. Just like uh, the, the knowledge, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil wasn't for Adam and Eve, the, tr- the law is not for us. The law kills, the law condemns. So that's one of the differences, and that's one of the reasons why we talk about that on the podcast a lot. And um, just real quickly, sometimes w- one of the things that I've liked that we've talked about here is this, uh, when we talk about the law that way, that we're not under the law, that the law doesn't give life, the law doesn't help us to, to live a good life, and in fact that um, we have to be dead to the law, that the people accuse us of saying, well, you're just giving people a license to sin. You're just running from you do everything good by, by denying the law. You see, the, good, the law is good and just and holy, and you're saying that it's bad. Well, no, we're not saying the law is bad. We're saying that it's so good that all it does is minister death, condemnation, and guilt. And so we get accused of preaching hyper-grace, we get, you know, people will say that we're, we're teaching this hypergrace stuff, that that hypergrace stuff is going to cause people to sin. Well, actually, Paul had taught that it's grace that teaches us to deny ungodliness and to say yes to righteous living. Grace is the thing that does that. God's superabounding, overabundant grace is the, the very thing that teaches us to say no to sin and that gives us the power to live uprightly. Yeah, and I, I think next week we'll get a little more into that whole hyper-grace, cheap grace, license to sin thing. We'll, we'll cover that. This knowledge of the tree of good and evil, as you alluded to, Joel, it was the knowledge, and it wasn't just evil, it was good and evil. And that's why a lot of people get a little bit messed up with trying to attain a certain level of morality through what they do. And God was trying to explain some things from the beginning of, of the Bible as we know it. Uh, on how this is all going to play out and and it eventually led to uh, the law being given to Israel and so forth but you know when people are trying to do good to please God to make themselves more righteous and holy when when they're trying to do that based on their own effort self-righteousness begins to develop and uh, that's what God referred to as uh, the smell of filthy rags your best effort is just garbage Uh, when it's compared to that good, righteous, and holy standard of the law. Well, we'll do more celebrating of our 800 podcasts next week on the Growing Grace podcast, including Embracing Hyper Grace. Stick with us next week right here on Growing in Grace. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski. Heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. Access past programs by visiting growingingrace.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.